Oh, you had it. I saw it earlier. Did you? It was in. An, it was in another pack. Okay. Yeah. In another pack. Okay. Yeah. Good. You had a pearl sun. What was that? That ain't a sun. Eighty-two oh seven. So what's that? Was a case? Is this a case? Yeah. Wild bear hump in the woods? Yes. <laughs> How yeah. old is it? Oh, that's, what is this? I'll tell you in a moment. The jury is out. It's back in. It's a tested 20 to 40. Could you open that again? Long pull. Long pull. 8207. It's 8207. This guy puts it on YouTube. Whether you like it or not. Whether like it or not. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, you like it or not. I saw you on YouTube and I want your price, guys. What you need to do. Is take a picture of a price guy there. Yep. For the for the small sum of ten dollars, they can be the proud proud owner. Is that mine? Let me see who this is. George Bush, Port Arthur. Hello. Hey man, I'm a, I'm a knife freak up in uh, Detroit. You're I, a knife uh, freak in uh, Detroit, Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, yeah. I, 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 yeah, Michigan, yeah. I'm here where it's cold, man. Well, you can have it, son. I'm down here in Florida at a knife show. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to find some warmth. Been, well, you get I've get your own down here to Florida. Yeah, Lakeland. It's like 60 or 70 oh, degrees there. Oh, really? Who is this? Mickey Mantle? Oh, Eugene Chet. No. I was there. Okay. How do I go about learning about this price, guys, for these Tesla Double XT Snipes? I got a whole bunch of them. All right, listen. Send me 10 bucks. PayPal, PayPal, or, or, cash or check, and you should anything you got should have my address on it. If you look on YouTube, that's it, that's it, that's it. Send ten bucks there and send me your name and address, and it'll be on the way. But I might, I might be out by the time I go. I might take a few days to get more of them, because I'm down here on the first day of the show. I am at a knife show as we speak. Okay. Well, listen, I'm in the middle of some horse trading, so I'll have to talk to you later, okay? Sounds good, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Another satisfied customer. I'm, I'm doing some. I'm doing some wild trading here with Mr. Richard Davies from Florida. Oh my goodness. This is a 5346 Whittler, WR probably, or Bradford. And it is, get out of the way. W.R. Case and Sons. W.R. Case and Sons means what? That means it was made between 1900 and 1920. It's stag, a three-blade whittler, a big one. So that's Scarce, pretty old, huh? Scarce as hen's teeth, yes, sir. Pretty what old. Do, what do Almost, they go for, roughly? Oh, that one's probably about 2,500. Wow. Oh, I got a lot higher than that. That is, that is a hunk of change. Here you go. These belong to Mr. Richard Davies from Naples, Florida. He's getting a little old like me. I'll be 86 
No, no, I am 86. I'm 87 in June. I'm an old fella. The goodies are about gone. You better get it while you can. Mr. Davies? So, hey, Jerry, come down here and speak to the camera. Fifty-two thirty-seven and a half. It's WR probably. Red winter bottom bone. You just see stuff here you don't see. I can anywhere. tell that's a long pull. Oh, is that long? See, I'm learning. Yes, sir. It's a thirty-seven and a half. WR cases and sons. That belongs to Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis got some the very best of the old stamps. Actually tested almost too new for him. Did they right use here? stag? Oh yeah. Did they use stag a lot back in the day, or? Well, they made stag all along, but it was real, a lot more expensive, like another twenty-five cents a knife, and people wouldn't pay it. <laughs> and really, true. That's, you, that's kind of funny buy, since it was twenty-five hundred. Yeah. A real nice pocket knife for fifteen twenty cents. Wow. When you start adding on, you know, fifteen cents to the knife, you done double the price. Yeah. The stag was more expensive, and bone was cheaper. So they a lot more cows with bone than they are deer with horns. Well, half the deer don't got no horns. <laughs> Antlers. All they got to want to. That ain't mine. A, a phone goes off and everybody jumps around looking for the phone. But that was not my ring. Oh, you're taking it with the, you're taking this through your camera now. You used to, last time you had a tripod or something, didn't you? He's you? moving up in the game. Yes, he is. You're going to edit this thing and like do your thing? Nice. I'm going to cut all the foul language. No. Oh, of course. But anything you want to talk about, you should talk about. Oh, yeah. About. I mean, some interesting stuff, you know. Uh, How about looking at my friend here, Larry Rip Williamson? He's from Loosedale, Mississippi. Big knife collector. He's a big man, too. Big guy. Big guy, yeah. He builds log trailers for a living. Do you collect case knives? Oh, yes, sir. Why do you collect case knives? Because they're the best. Okay. The, uh, the history of them, the collectability, the resale, the, they're just the best made knife money can get. And a 110-year-old knife that looks and still works like it's supposed to is everything. What's your favorite to collect a case? Uh, trappers are, you know, as, uh, as, you know, in uh, the 88th to 4th uh, Congress, the big Congress is uh, one of my favorites. I like them all. You know, the green bone is my favorite, and, you know, I collect mostly green bone, but I, I'm getting into both. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. Tony Foster has uh, mentored me through all this and helped me. And, you know, even though I buy it from my editors, you know, he helps me through it. And uh, like I said, you know, he has, he is the godfather of Cash Knives. And that's what we, we look up to him. You can look at all these knives here, they're the best. And, and uh, the case knives are the best, and uh, that's why we keep coming back. What you got there, man? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Frappuccino. Cappuccino. Frappuccino. No, he didn't ask me if I wanted one. Well, what are we on to now? You want the peanuts? Freebies? How about, uh, can you tell you a little bit more about the markings? I want to talk more about stamps. Well, I'll turn this over to Jerry. He knows all that real good. Tank stamps. What do you want to talk about? Just to start it off with WR cases. How do you identify, uh, the, how old they are, uh, how collectible they are. Oh, wait a minute, I'll tell you what, let's... 
Switch it. Oh, yeah, you got to get Give him the spotlight. There you go. And he dribbled all over him, but that's okay. Right, you put it wherever it's, you need it. It's all in the family. All in the family. I get it. This is, this is yeah. I'm talking about, I'll talk about the common, the most common yeah. case, uh, case markings. The more common case markings uh, will start around the year 1920, and that stems from 1920 to 1940. Those knives are all marked case tested. Those tested knives will have a tested stamp case tested xx on the stamp and those knives are the more desirable of the fair more common case knives because anything made before 1920 was not common what's the significance of saying it was tested They're that's just... the that's the error it was made approximately between 1920 oh, okay. and so and tested doesn't mean it was put through some well they control used, the tested uh the tested let's say trademark if you will was uh, kind of a, I think, more of a sales gimmick. The XX, however, would be part of the process of making the knife, where they would temper the knife blade once with an X, they would stamp or mark the actual tray of blades, and then the next tempering on the blade, they would put the next X, that would show the people working in the factory that these blades have been tempered twice, they're ready to go into the frame of the knife. They decided to use that as part of the sales for the company, and it just kind of happened that way. It means they've been what worked on twice. Tempered the tempering of the steel on the blade, and it was a it was a uh, it was a uh, it was a marking they would use in the factory just to show the other workers what process they were in the br blade process. Because you know, the steel. I, I want to interject. I just found out what the XX was on these moonshine bottles. <laughs> it, if it went through the still once, it got one X. If it, went, if it distilled it twice, it got two Xs. Okay. It's pretty so, much the same thing. So I don't know thing. if there's a connection there. Like, yeah, it's just a funny. mark that's been that put through possible, twice. It's possible, you know. Who knows what uh, these moonshiners and knife makers were into. Yeah, right well, now. the same folks, maybe. Yeah. But, um, so the case tested XX with a long tail C usually in the tested in there. That would be the old stamp, the 20 to 40 stamp. Then the next more common stamp would be between 1940 and 64 the case long big capital letters case with the big xx underneath a lot of people call that x's underneath or x's down or something like that that's what's considered double x and those blades were made between 1940 and 1964. so in 1965 they had to start putting the country of origin so they stamped it case xx with a usa underneath so those are just called USA knives. Those knives were made between 1965 and 1969. 1970 came along and Case decided to make a different stamping for each year to indicate each year the actual knives were made, simply because knives were becoming popular, collecting kind of was starting up, and they wanted to know what year the knife was actually made. So in 1970, they started using a dotting system. In 1970, knife will have 10 dots, the next year, in 1971, they will only have nine dots and so on and so forth until they get to the last year, which uh, 1979 would have a one dot. Then the next uh, 80 series knives, they would use the same exact process. However, they would change the actual lettering so you could determine an 80 series from a 70 series, still using the dots as their dating process. Anything after that is a little too new for us to even talk about because I don't really deal with anything newer than that. All right, that's great. Not too bad. All right, he's still trading over here, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. We own and deal it. <laughs> Gentlemen, Godfather, yes, thank sir. you very much. Thank you. All right. See you next year. All right, you got a deal. <laughs>